Well, fantastic job, Erin. We are going to move to the segment of the presentation where uh, we are going to discuss specific cases. I invite Dr. Kevin Rogers to discuss and present his case on complex infrapopliteal disease with tibiopedal axis. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So I was asked to uh, present a case of uh, complex below knee uh, revascularization. So the history, uh, this patient was a 59-year-old female. She had long-standing diabetes. She was referred to our clinic for a non-healing left first toe ulcer that had been present for three months. She also had a non-healing left heel ulcer. On exam, she had palpable femoral pulses, but absent popliteal and pedal pulses bilaterally. You can see um, her left first toe has a rather large ulcer, has some signs of infection, uh, some surrounding erythema, the, the wound looks wet. The um, lateral heel also has an ulcer that's covered with a dry escar. Her ABIs were in the 0.5 range and her toe pressure was 51. So not the worst hemodynamics in the world, but perhaps not good enough to heal this degree of tissue loss in a diabetic in the presence of infection. By duplex, she had an SFA occlusion as well. So her management, uh, she was under the care of a podiatrist. Um, I referred her to infectious disease and encouraged her uh, primary care doctor to work on the diabetes. Uh, we first revascularized her SFA occlusion with exc excisional atherectomy and five millimeter scoring balloons and drug coated balloons. And at that time, I also uh, revascularized an anterior tibial artery stenosis uh, with oral atherectomy and a scoring balloon. However, uh, three weeks later, the heel wound was not improving, and so I decided to revascularize a residual occlusion of the posterior tibial artery. And this is the initial angiogram at that procedure. So my um, access was anagrade in the left common femoral artery. I put a 45 centimeter sheath, the tip uh, down into the popliteal artery. And you can see the popliteal is patent the anterior tibial is patent after we had worked on it, and the perineal is also patent. The posterior tibial artery occludes in the mid-calf and doesn't reconstitute until a lateral plantar artery in the foot. And you might uh, understand why I, I um, did not go after the posterior tibial artery initially. I thought that this robust anterior tibial dorsalis pedis and a fairly robust perineal artery were going to be sufficient to heal. So I initially tried to cross the posterior tibial artery anagrade. I tried to be careful. I used a fluoroscopic roadmap. I didn't feel like I pushed very hard, but I ended up extravascular, perhaps through a collateral, and developed a perforation. So after a prolonged balloon inflation, the perforation sealed, and uh, I began to consider what were my retrograde options to revascularize the posterior tibial artery. Uh, transmetatarsal, uh, lateral plantar um, were options considered. Perhaps sticking the occluded posterior tibial artery was an option. Um, I didn't list transcollateral access because I felt like this collateral um, is actually probably proximal to the occlusion. And, and lastly, I considered a uh, pedal loop technique to access the distal cap of the posterior tibial artery occlusion. So she actually had a very attractive plantar arch um, to access the distal cap of the occlusion. So I have an O and 8 catheter down in the dorsalis pedis, and I've done a fluoroscopic road map which shows an intact plantar arch with not really that much tortuosity. We were able to nav navigate the mild tortuosity coming around the plantar arch, and for this case I used a uh, Fielder FC. Once uh, I was in the lateral plantar artery, that segment was easier to wire. It's relatively straight, and there's not many branches um, to get hung up in. I find that the, um, around uh, the heel is a more challenging area to wire. I think the anatomy is more uh, variable here. The um, distal posterior tibial uh, just above the plantar branches, I think, is more tortuous. 
Uh, sometimes it even takes, I think, foot maneuvers to straighten out this segment and to adequately wire it. So after we had advanced our wire into the, what we thought was a distal posterior tibial artery, I did an angiogram from above to confirm that I was heading in the right direction. And I did think that the wire was heading towards this small island of uh, reconstituted posterior tibial artery. I think it's very important when traversing the plantar arch to try to uh, protect it with a catheter. I think uh, flossing it with a wire can dissect or cause severe spasm. Um, in this case, uh, I was able to get the O and 8 quick cross catheter around the arch. I find often I'm not able to get an O and 8 catheter around it. It requires an O and 4 catheter, but we were fortunate here and got the O and 8 catheter around the plantar arch into the distal posterior tibial artery. And then once we're in the distal posterior tibial artery, we're in a position where we can, we can cross. Now we've accessed the distal cap of the occlusion. Um, in this case, I decided to just knuckle and try to get across the occlusion, so I used a Fielder XT wire. Um, I chose to knuckle in this instance. For one, it was a long occlusion, and for two, I didn't want to get extravascular again like I had on the anti-grade approach. Fortunately, the um, loop on the wire stayed pretty small, and the wire uh, passed fairly freely into what felt like the true lumen in the distal popliteal artery. At this point, I was not able to advance my 018 catheter across the occlusion, so I exchanged it for an 014, uh, the Corsair catheter here. And the Corsair um, protected the arch, protected the AT, and allowed me to externalize my wire. And we were fortunate in this case that we didn't have to snare or do anything fancy. We, luckily, the wire just went into the sheath. I wish it always was like that. So following a successful externalization of the wire, reversing our wire, um, we just treated with uh, plain angioplasty. Um, I ivised before I performed angioplasty and was disappointed that the lateral plantar artery was only 1.5 millimeters and the posterior tibial artery was only 2.0 millimeters. But nonetheless, that's the size of balloons we used. We used a 1.5 millimeter balloon in the lateral plantar and I used a 2 millimeter um, scoring balloon um, throughout the length of the posterior tibial artery. And this is our final result. Um, there's now inline flow to the heel via the posterior tibial artery. So at follow-up, her um, ankle brachial indices improved to 0.8. The toe pressure improved uh, to 120 from 50. And she um, achieved complete healing of her wounds, although it did take almost six months. And now we've got 20 months of follow-up, and she's not had any recurrence clinically of critical limb ischemia. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Such an elegant presentation. I want to highlight two things that Kevin again specified is that after you went uh, through the pedal arch, you switched your wire and didn't stay with the Pilot 200. That was a subtle comment, but very well taken. And the second thing you notice that he used a 90 centimeter sheath. It's probably not productive to have a sheath in the groin uh, and try to do a pedal or retrograde access. So I think those are excellent cases.